Father, I know I'm in good hands. Father, it is your hands. Father, I know there's a good plan. Cause Father, it is your plan. Father, at times when I worry, I'm sorry. And times when I forget who I am, who I am, a child of God, I am one of a kind, I am made in your image, Father. I know that I'm in good. Father, I'm in your hands. I want to tell you that we are in a real crucial time. History has not seen this since the biblical plagues hit Egypt. We're in a time where people are gathering resources from wherever they can for their household and to finance their agendas. I've been listening to a couple prominent pastors, people that uh, people follow, but I don't think they check their Bible to see if what that pastor is saying is true. Here's a couple clips of a couple pastors who are trying to get finances in this time of need where a lot of people are unemployed. No money is coming in, and what little money is coming in, you really need it. People are scraping right now for resources for their own household. So here's a couple clips of a couple pastors giving ins biblical instructions for their agenda. And then after you hear these couple clips, I'm going to tell you what the Bible really says about your giving, about my giving. I give to institutions that are doing what God said. I'm gonna give you biblical instructions straight from the Bible of what the Bible says to actually do when it comes to your giving. Watch this clip and I'll be right back. Fear of this, this coronavirus is, is faith in its ability to hurt you or kill you. Uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the fear of what are we gonna do? I'm getting laid off at work. Hey, your job's not your source. Mm -hmm. If it is, you're in trouble. Jesus is your source. Whatever you do right now, don't you stop tithing. Mm. Don't you stop sowing offerings. Well, they won't let us go to church. Well, email it in there, text the give or something, but you get your tithe in that church. If you have to go take it down there and drop it off and stick it under the door or something, right, you right. get that tithe in that church, you get that offering in that church, and then you go home and you do what we're supposed to do. Um, many people are emailing and asking uh, how should we go about paying tithing and offering because many out of fear don't want to come out, which is understandable. Well, you can send them to the PayPal on, at, at our website at headquarters, which is what many people are doing. You can just send your tithing and your offering to the First Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go on our website, go to the PayPal and send it there because virus or no virus, bills still have to be paid and the message still have to go out. And God be our helper. We're going to get it out. I'm going to go through about nine books of the Bible and I'm going to tell you what this Bible really says. And I don't have nothing to gain. I can't mislead you. I'm going to tell you word for word what the Bible says about your giving. You ready? Get your Bibles. <laughs> in the book of James. Let's start there. The book of James. It's in the back of your Bible for some of you who haven't turned and dust off your Bibles in a long time. <laughs> We'll start with the book of James. Remember, the Bible reads different when you know who the children of Israel really are. 
here in the book of James. Let's start with James because I want to put this in its context. The book of James, chapter one, verse one. Who's the book written to? If the book is written to Mark, then Steve can't open it. It's not to Steve. Here's who this book is written to. James is writing it. A servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. So first of all, this is a book written to the children of Israel. Somebody said, well, what's the difference in the children of Israel and the church? I got to, there's a difference. The Bible reads different when you know who the children of Israel really are. And they're here. Your church doesn't teach about them. And it's not those people over in Israel right now. I'm going to get to that. So the book of James, chapter 1, verse 27 says, started in verse 26. And he bridleth not his tongue, he deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is in vain. Verse 27 of chapter 1 says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless. Is your church visiting the fatherless? They know who got two or three kids in the church. Are they visiting the fatherless? And the widows in their affliction. Right now, the widows are afflicted. I'm not talking about some girl that's just having 10 babies by 10 different baby daddies. Though they need help too. The widows had a husband and the finances were coming by the husband. They didn't have any financial needs. So the visit... The fatherless and the widows and their affliction and keep himself unspotted from the world. So whatever financial institution you're sowing your money to, giving your money to, they should be helping widows and fatherless children. If they're not doing that, then they're not really a good religion, are they? According to the scripture, don't, don't, according to the scripture. I'm going to go from the New Testament down to the Old. 2 Corinthians, got your Bible? Chapter 11 says in verse 9, this was Paul speaking. He says, and when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man for that which was lacking to me. The brethren which came from Macedonia supplied all in all things. I have kept myself from being a burden to you, so I kept myself. Paul said, so I wasn't going to be a burden to you, so I wasn't going to be your preacher without a job. Paul was a tent maker. Paul had a job. But Paul said to the Corinthians, so that I didn't become a burden to you, collect your resources and your finances so you had to take care of the preacher. I got my, my resources from someplace else. Paul was a tent maker. Paul had a job. So some of you believe that we have to take care of our preacher. That's not, that's not in your Bible. The Bible says if a man doesn't work, a man should not eat. I talked to one pastor recently out of Lansing, Michigan. Great pastor from Walk in Truth Ministry from Lansing, Michigan. An Uber driver. I don't care what you do. And I applaud him. I don't care what you do, but the Bible says if a man doesn't work, he should not eat. Well, I take care. We take care of our pastor. Well, you, your pastor has a wife and a child. Why isn't he working? You teach your sons to work. You teach your uncle and your nephew. You should have a job. Why isn't your pastor working? Why doesn't he have a job? Oh, these are hard questions. Boom. <laughs> Stay right there in 2 Corinthians. Chapter 9, verse 7 says, when it comes to your giving, every man, here's the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the meat of it. Let's cut away the fat. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. It's going to be in your heart what you're supposed to give. There's not going to be an envelope coming around to your house. No one's going to be texting you saying, here's the phone number for you to give. It's already in your heart what you're supposed to give. And if you are unemployed like most of America, you don't know where your next uh, unemployment check's going to come. It's 
kind of hard to give. But you do have people who will tell you, well, you were given when, uh, when you were blessed. When you were really blessed, you were given. Don't stop giving now. Well, if I looked in my wallet and I had to give, and I look in my wallet now and don't have to give, it's kind of hard for you to tell me to stop giving now. Listen to this pastor right here. Because I don't want to hurt my friends or my love who believe things I don't believe anymore. And I will tell you now something that is, is going to shock you. I think it's an offense to the Lord. It's an offense to say, give $1,000. I think it's offense to the Holy Spirit to place a price on the gospel. I'm done with it. I will never again ask you to give a thousand or whatever amounts because I think the Holy Ghost is just fed up with it. Are you, did you hear me? I think that hurts the gospel. So I'm making this statement for the first time in my life. And frankly, I don't care what people think about me anymore. So I, I, I had a guy... Well, I'll tell you who. It was Dan Willis. I, I, I love Dan with all my heart. I said, don't you dare preach that message again. Yeah. <laughs> if, just a few days ago. I said, no, no. I said, when, when, I'm not going to hear it. I don't want to be a part of it. So I, when they invite me to telethons, I think they will not like me anymore. <laughs> because if you look at the Word of God, I don't want to get into it now. Am I shocking you? Good, let's have a high five on this one. If I hear one more time, break the back of debt with a thousand dollars, I'm going to rebuke them. I, I, I think that's buying the gospel, that's buying the blessing, that's grieving the Holy Spirit. That's about all I will say. If you are not giving because you love Jesus, don't bother giving. I think giving has become such a gimmick, it's making me sick to my stomach. And I've been sick for a while too, I just couldn't say it. And now the lid is off. I've had it. You know why? I don't want to get to heaven and be rebuked. Amen. No, I think it's time we say it like it is. The gospel is not for sale. And the blessings of God are not for sale. And miracles are not for sale. And prosperity is not for sale. Did you hear what that preacher just said? What he's what I, I interpret him saying is don't fall for the gimmicks anymore. He admits that in the religious circle, you've heard terms like this. Under this anointing, under this anointing, God told me, or the Holy Spirit told me that 30 people in this room should give a hundred dollars. Under this anointing, come now, come quick, quick, get it, get it, get it. If you don't have $100, get as close as you can. If you only have five, ten, get that in your hand. Did the Holy Spirit tell you 30 people in the room had 100? Or did he say get as close as you can? No more gimmicks. I'm, I'm not telling you that the preachers that I posted on here are right. I'm not telling you that they're wrong. What I'm telling you is really I'm opening your eyes that no more since you've been at home, you, you need money. What has been happening is people have been telling you, the preacher have been telling you, if you need a blessing from God, you need to sow into this ministry. Sow $91, sow $50. But if you really need a blessing and a real miracle from God, dig deep. Give a special, give a special offering and watch God bless you. And then they say something like, two years ago, I needed a blessing from God. 
and the preacher told me to give a special offering. I didn't have it to give, but I gave X amount of dollars. And by the end of the week, $3,000 was in my mailbox out of the blue. No more gimmicks. God is blessing you, not because you put something in that offering plate. You've been home how many weeks now? God is blessing you. First of all, God responds to faith. He's not blessing you because you did or did not put something in that offering plate. You hear me? Don't think no more, well, if I give to God, then like like a genie, I'm going to give him X amount of dollars and he's going to give me X amount back. He doesn't work that way. That's just not the way he works. So I'm opening your eyes, showing you these three pastors, and I'm not saying they're right or wrong once again. What I am telling you is God doesn't bless you according to what you put in that offering plate. If you really need a blessing, you need to give more. God doesn't work like that. Okay? And I'm not saying this about the, these guys that you're watching, but I'm just going to point out a couple of scriptures about, uh, about what the scriptures say about pastors. We have some beautiful pastors out there. We have some men and women of God. I'll be honest. There's some men and women of God out there. But let's keep your eyes open. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 and 16 says, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravenly wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Grapes are the, the best. Of thorns means it's a dry place. Figs of thistles is... You know, you got figs, something you can eat, but you're trying to get it from a dry place. Who gathers grapes from dry places? Who goes to pour and say, give, keep giving. God is going to bless you. You keep giving. I know you're poor, but keep giving. You beware of people like that. And I know people are going to take you over to Malachi. I'm going there. Malachi chapter three, verse eight says, because if you want to be blessed, you got to give. You got to give. How many of you need a blessing? See, here's the pitch. Wind it up and toss it. Here's the pitch. How many of you need a blessing? You know you're standing in a financial blessing. Dig in your pocket and you give and God is going to bless you. Malachi says, remember Malachi was to the children of Israel. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 says, Will a man rob God? Yet have y'all robbed him in tithes and in offering. Ye are cursed with the curse. Ye have robbed me. Who? This whole nation, the nation of Israel, not America. In the verse 10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. You see where it says bring your tithes, that there might be meat, M-E-A-T? That's food. Into my house and prove me wherein, oh, excuse me, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. The storehouse is where you have a refrigerator or some cabinets. What do you do with that? That you may, that there might be meat in my house. Meat. What the preacher is not going to tell you is, it's not that they were not given to the most high, but in chapter one, verse seven and eight, it says they were bringing him polluted meat. They were bringing him blind meat. They were bringing him food that was not fit to eat. If you had a ram, they weren't giving him the best rams. They were giving him rams that were polluted, tattered. It was for the priest to eat. It was for the people to eat. And the, the people were bringing him the worst, not the best. So what does the scripture say about pastors who just want and want and want so they can get another building, so they can put their car out front, so everybody can see their car parked in the pastor spot while you walk by because you, your, your, your time of wealth sowing uh, into your financial life has not blossomed yet, but they're older and they are living tax-free, 501c, excuse me. They live tax-free. A lot of them live tax-free. The Bible says, 
Isaiah 56, verse 11, Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. They are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his gain and for his quarter. If your lights get cut off or if you, if you are in need, you can go to that institution and say, look, I've been sowing into this ministry for years. Can you help me? I guess you won't know until you try it. But a lot of times you have to be referred over to deacon so-and-so and then deacon so-and-so. I'm about to close the book. I'm going to go over one more thing. Can I go over one more thing? Because I just heard the pastor tell you to sow your tithes and your offering. Deuteronomy chapter 14. Now, I already told you your offering back in 2 Corinthians is let every man give as he is able to give. That's your offering. Give whatever you're able to give. It might be 10, 20, 20,000. Give as you're able to give to help God's work feeding the poor. Helping the widows. In Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22 through 27, then I'm going to hit verse 29. You go back and you read this. This is the only O-N-L-Y. I wish I could say it in Spanish. <laughs> That's good. This is the only place in the entire book that says what tithing is. Chapter 14, verse 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed. You know what a seed is? Your seed is not money. That the field bring forth year by year. And while I read this, the Bible says don't add and don't take away. Take this for what it says, just for what it says. Your seed that, that your field bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat before. Put in this context, what are we talking about? You're tithing. He said, you're going to eat before the Lord your God in the place which he shall choose to place his name thereon. And this is what you're going to eat. Verse 23 of chapter 14 of Deuteronomy. Read it. it says you're going to eat corn. It says your tithing is wine. It says your tithing is oil. It says your tithing is firstlings of the herd and the flocks that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord your God, always. Did he say take your money and drop it in an offering plate and call that a tithing? Why are you doing it? Well, because nowadays, don't add and don't take away. Oh, you said they didn't have money back then. Okay. Verse 24, and if the way be, t so you got some money in your hand. Okay. You, you got, you have, you have some food in your hand. You have actual food, produce in your hand, corn and all the stuff I just named. And if the way is too far for thee, that you're not able to carry all the corn, the berries, the wine, the, the, the food, because it'll rot in that hot sun. If it's, the place is too far, which the Lord has chosen to set his name thereon, then thou shalt turn it into money. You take the food and you turn it into money. You go to the money changer and turn it into money. Verse 25. You should bind up the money in your hand and go to the place which the Lord shall choose. Where the Now you got money. You have extra money in your hand. Let's see if the Bible says take that money and drop it in the offering plate. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Now you take that money and you buy ox, sheep, wine, strong drink, for whatsoever your soul lusts after, that thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God, and shall rejoice thou in thine household. Now you take the money and you buy more food, so you can eat. Your tithing is never money, and when it is, you turn it into food. Now who's supposed to eat? Verse 26 says you're supposed to eat it. Verse 27 says, and the Levites that are within thy gates. Thou shalt not forsake him, for he shall he didn't have no part of his inheritance. When the children of Israel came out of the land of bondage and land was portioned out amongst the people, the, the Levites did not have land to sow, to plant. Make sure the Levites eat amongst you. Your pastor is not a Levite. Verse 29 says, The Levites, because he has no inheritance with thee, the strangers who are with you, make sure they eat. The fatherless, make sure they eat. The widows, make sure they eat. 
They shall come and eat and be satisfied that the Lord thy God may, may bless thee in all the works of thine hand which thou doest. That's the only definition of tithing in the entire book. It doesn't say take your money and drop it in the offering plate. It says you have food and if the place is too far for you to go, you take that food, you turn it into money. Now you have money in your hand. You have actual tangible money in your hand. You have to go on a far journey to worship, to give sacrifice, to supply a national feast for the feast days. See, the church don't talk about feast days. They had feast days, and they're not done away with. Feast days. Look it up. On the feast days, you supplied the food for the national feast. So the priests had to eat. The widows had to eat. You had to eat your tithing. And the fatherless had to eat. So if the place was too far, you take that money. Once you get to that place of journey, you buy food. Tithing is only food. It's never money. When it comes to your giving, putting your money in the plate that every man give as he is able to give, and if there's a financial institution that's doing the things that I just that the scripture just listed, not me, the scripture just listed feeding the poor, the fatherless, the widows, help that financial institution. Is that all right? I'm done. <laughs> Be blessed. <laughs>